Now I thought we would finish with this one over here, uh, partly because it's a special one. This shuffle here is the inverse of this one. Isn't that curious? Well, what does it mean to be the inverse? It means that if you perform this shuffle and then perform this shuffle, you get back to the original order one through eight. Well, from the diagram, it would seem to be reasonable because look, eight and one get sent back and forth between each other. So if we do that twice, yes, it goes back to where it was. And then notice we get the same looking diagram, but the arrows are reversed. So if you want to just picture this reversing the actions of each of these arrows here. So we have an arrow that goes from two to six, but guess what? We have an arrow that goes from six to two. So why don't we even just show that really quickly here? So those end up being inverses. And by the way, it's not really at all clear looking at those shuffles that they should be inverses. It really, really isn't. Okay, so here is the new one, the, the last one for today. Okay, so this is a shuffle in which it's similar to the one we just did, but now we're stacking from right to left instead of left to right. That's the only difference. Okay, so if we begin with our um, ordered packet, uh, one through eight, as we've been doing, and then we go ahead and perform this shuffle. Let's go ahead and do it. Involves uh, four, uh, four piles, right? Four piles, left, right. Very good. Now, in stacking, instead of stacking left to right, so remember, this is pile one, two, three, four. So it says stack four on three. Very good. Stack those two on top of two like that, and then that big packet on top of one. So really, we're just stacking from right to left. It's just the opposite stacking. Well, why that would be the inverse of this upper shuffle is not clear at all. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> so the claim then is if, see, we have this new ordering, right? I'll just show you that it's eight, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. Okay, that's correct. So the claim now is that if we perform the shuffle up above, let me just highlight that again up here, this one. Which shuffle was that one? Well, that's just a left-right on which we're stacking right on left. Okay, just going like that. Well, apparently we should get back to the original ordering of the packet. And we do. We get back to one through eight. And boy, I don't know how many people would be able to very quickly discern that this shuffling into two piles is the inverse to the one where we shuffle into four piles. But boy, do these diagrams make clear that they should be inverses, right? I mean, look at the figure. That's a very strange looking figure. That same geometric shape is right down here. The only difference is the reversal of the arrows, okay? And even here, the, the arrows were reversed. <laughs> you just, you don't see it, right? So if you reverse this arrow, it goes that way. First, <laughs> reverse this arrow goes that way. So the net effect, it looks the same, okay? So this truly is the inverse of that one. How interesting is that? Okay, well, that's enough for today. We're going to be looking at additional Bessie shuffles. And so remember, a Bessie shuffle is simply a shuffle that preserves Bessie sequences. That's our definition, okay? And it ends up that because Bessie sequences are so versatile and so amazingly constructed that they are, quote, invariant under so many of the small packet-sized shuffles that are used today. So it ends up that many, many shuffles that people use are actually examples of Bessie shuffles. And they're examples of Bessie shuffles because they preserve Bessie sequences. That's what qualifies being a Bessie shuffle. It has to preserve or invert Bessie sequences. So try out this pair on a family member or friend. Start with eight cards and do this left, right, left, right with right on left and then do into four piles, stacking right to left, and take advantage of the fact that 
that once you do that, you know that the packet's been returned to its original order. Isn't that amazing? So if you have a, a certain packet, say you have four aces followed by, why don't we just do it? So you, if you have a packet in a certain order, so why don't we put it in chased order? It's called clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. That's a very classic ordering of the suits. It's called chaste order because the CHSD helps you remember C for clubs, H for hearts, S for spades, D for diamonds. So let's say you have the four aces followed by the four jacks. So by these last two diagrams, the ones that we set are inverses of each other, what you could do is you could say, okay, I'm going to um, deal the, I'm going to mix these cards and we'll stack right on left because it's the right thing to do, right? That's why we do it. We want to do the right thing in life, don't we? And we'll stack right to left. Do you want to do any more of those? Do you want to do another left, right? Okay. Right on left because it's the right thing to do. And I guess we can follow it up with filling into four so it doesn't feel left out. We'll stack right to left. And once again, it's the right thing to do. Should we do any more of those? And I should point out that you could do four of the d dealing into two piles and then do four of the dealing into four piles. And that will still return the packet to its original order. As long as you do each of those shuffles the same number of times, it doesn't matter in what order you do those, okay? And so anyway, we've done it uh, twice each. And so right here, you could uh, offer the cards to them. Well, what do we know? We know the top card is an ace of clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, followed by a jack of clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. So you could just put that out for, the, the, uh, for them to choose a card at random. And so maybe they choose this one. Well, you know it's a jack of clubs. You just set that down. Okay, and as far as they, they know, you don't know anything. You've just mixed the cards right in front of them. And so you have them look at the card, and then you look deeply into their eyes and try to divine what card they randomly chose. And so you can you know, kind of make a game of it and say, well, it's a face card, so it's a jack. And I think it's black. Uh, it's a club, isn't it? And so you can look at them and try to get wait for some kind of smile or some kind of feedback. But you know, you know it's the Jack of Clubs. Okay, so eventually you can just reveal that it's the Jack of Clubs and watch their eyes go big like, how in the world <laughs> did you know that I randomly chose that? Because they randomly chose it. They truly did. It's just that by the time we perform those shuffles in the way that we did, they undo each other. So it gets back to the original order that we had knowledge of, okay? So anyway, that, that's just another simple example of what you can do um, once you understand permutations. So thank you for watching. In fact, I'll show you what we'll do next time. We'll be looking, oh, look at those. Those are cool ones. We'll be looking at these four shuffles and the effect that they have on a packet of eight cards and whether they preserve Bessie sequences or invert them, and ways in which you can use your understanding of all of this to design fun and engaging card effects. So thank you for watching.